joining us now. And I don't do I don't do a lot of Maryland terrapins on the show, man. Like I, you know, like this you got you got to really be my dude. And but but he's a cool one. He's <laughs> yeah, the lights out, dude. We were watching <laughs> Sean Merriman. You know who it is, guys. Uh, Sean, how are we? I'm doing I'm doing well, man. How about yourself? We're good. I was up late watching these fights, and like I was telling you offline, I was like. You know, we sit here and argue, me and Nate, about is it fixed? You know, um, is could Tyron beat him up if he fought him twice? Like all this stuff. We don't know the fight game like somebody like you. You started lights out, and we'll get to that in a second. What do you watch? Because you have an, a unique seat as an athlete and a guy who's kind of dove into the whole fighting world, which is way different. What do you see when you watch this stuff? Well, okay, first and foremost, I, I want to kind of set the – just how people look at it. Right. Yeah. And so people want to automatically say, you know, this is going to disturb or disrupt boxing. I look at it as entertainment. Right. right. Um, and how do people feel when they pay their $60 for the fight? Did they get their $60 worth? That's, that's how I look at it because me being in the, in the fight business, uh, with lights out extreme fighting, even though it's MMA, I grew up in, in a boxing family. All my, all my family were, professional boxers, uncles and cousins. So I grew up in a boxing family. Um, but I look at it as entertainment, right? I mean, just if you're looking at it to see top quality, a plus boxing, then you're looking at it wrong. Right. Uh, I see it as somebody with a, a great following like Jake Paul. Uh, and I see somebody that's a decorated MMA guy that's on his way out. I mean, he's, he's retiring, he's retiring, you know, retiring soon. So, who who's not going to want to pay to see them fight? Right. That's how I say it's two popular kids in high school that, you know, you say at three at 3 PM, meet me out back. Right. Um, now they're the two popular kids. What's going to happen. The whole entire school is going to come and watch them fight. And that's, that's basically what's happening right now. My only thing is this though, if the two popular kids went out back and they were fighting, they wouldn't say like touch gloves. You guys got to stay in the, in the ring and, and Hey, no illegal, punching and like it would just be a it'd be kind of more like what you're into the mma stuff i feel like yeah i mean okay so i think they did it right right yeah. and steven espinosa and those guys over the showtime they've been doing it for a very long time yeah um what they did was they put the people that's going to draw in the eyeballs as a main event yeah. and you put some really good fighters who who've been around for a long time as your co-main event and undercard yeah so you, the people like love the one that fought uh, two fights before um, two fights before the main main event. Yep. Um, I didn't know I watched, I knew who he was, but I never really watched him. So guess what I'm doing now? I'm going to be watching exactly. love yeah. from this point on. I didn't know he was that good. I thought I, I knew of him. He beat, he beat the guy from Richmond. Well, no. So that makes sense. Th this makes perfect sense. Like what you were arguing earlier, which I don't even know what we're arguing about. Cause like, for me, I'm just saying that Jake Paul's not that good at boxing. Like he's, he's, I respect it, but like fight a real fighter, which is, it's low hanging fruit for everybody. Like mm -hmm. we know eventually it has to go there cause this might get old. But my thing is, the redeeming value here is I get to watch Serrano fight for the first time, you know, last and, night, you know, it, and that was like, holy shit. And now I'm going to do what Sean's talking about doing, which is I'm going to follow a guy or a girl's career. And I didn't say this earlier in the right way, but like Sean was saying, the fact that Serrano got that popularity, it's because of Jake Paul. It's because, yes, but like, that's, and, but, and but it's, it's, it's setting that up, but he's been vocal about how he's willing to do that and right. help all these guys, like, if you want this promotion, get on these cards with me and do your thing. Yeah, yeah. And so I respect and like that factor totally, of it. Totally good with that. Totally good with that. I'm not, you know, I, I, I respect the kid and what he's doing is obviously su successful. What happens if they fight again? Is there like, because I, you could tell early on that one, like Woodley's like, uh, let me get him tired. And two, I got to figure out how to box in actuality. Well, you know, I'm, I, I know both of them well. They... I've known him for a long time, both of them. And so when you look at this fight, I don't think it's worthy of a rematch. I don't think they're going to make the same amount of money. I don't think they're going to get the same amount of pay-per-views. It wasn't exciting enough. Right, and, right. and T. Wood just didn't let his hands go enough. He had Jake right. hurt. And so my thing is, if you did want a rematch, let your hands go because all rematches, you know, two and, and, and uh, you know, sequels, trilogies, is because these guys get it on. They throw punches. They're like, you know what? We want to see this shit again, no matter what. And I just didn't see enough in that fight for them, for me to sit back and say, you know what? 
I'll, I'll pay another $60 to see that again. I think it's going to be better if Jake Paul goes fight Nick Diaz or uh, Masvidal or somebody else and double up on what he did this fight. I, they're going to do 1.5, one, you know, over a million pay-per-views. Now, if he ran into the wrong guy and they kind of walked him into that situation, they're walking him in knowing that, like, we have to have a plan when and if he gets knocked out because eventually he's going to lose. And so what's their backup plan? Because then the redeeming value isn't like, oh, there's this undefeated Cinderella story. I, I just I look at it like this. And people say that, you know, he should go and fight a real boxer and all other stuff. He's only been fighting for a couple of years. Right. He's only been training. Um, I've stayed with them in uh, in Big Bear when they right. Shane, when Shane Mosley was training before G, uh, right. BJ Flores became his full time trainer. I trained with them for three four days. The first thing when I saw him train, I was like, "This dude has a professional athlete's mentality." Yeah, like it wasn't no TikTok shit. It wasn't no. It was none of that going on. You know, it was it was like, man, we we waking up at this time. We eating breakfast this, at this time. We're working out. It was structured. And so he has the mentality to get there. So for anybody to saying he should go and fight Canelo or uh, a Spencer or anybody, it's crazy. This professional boxers right now is 10 and 15. No, there's basically still fighting scrubs to, right. to, you know, to make their record better. Right. This, right. this guy's actually going out and fighting. Now I take Ben Ashkin off. Yeah, I think that, ben, that, that one was like, man, I, you knew that I, was, man. <laughs> I think, I think Ben, honestly, and, and, and nothing, nothing against Ben, Ben's a great guy. I think yeah. he was trying to get a paycheck yeah, and check. moving the hell on. Yeah. Good for him, dude. My, my back was fucked up. You know, I'm like, Hey dude, <laughs> especially in the UFC where they don't take care of you the way, you know, they do in other leagues. And that's not well, saying a lot. I, and and this is my thing because Jake Jake Paul is fighting for that reason, right? Saying yeah. that fighters not getting paid. Jake Paul has to also understand that he was somebody big before he came to box. So these guys is fighting in the UFC or they're fighting with lights out. They're trying to get their name there. And it's yeah. not that you know, guys UFC don't want to pay them. It's how many tickets can you sell? What's your following look like? And can you sell pay per views? Right. Then you get paid. Right. No, I mean like, and this is one thing we we were going back and forth earlier, but. When this started, I was like, man, this is a fucking joke. But in, in actuality, even though I don't think, and it's obvious, he's not like a, you know, a high, high level professional boxer, I respect his mentality. That's the one thing that showed through is like, the guy has worked really hard at it. He's been fearless, um, albeit the, the, you know, kind of some of the hand picking of the opponents. But I mean, his mentality has been impressive and, and his marketability has been just for guys in our age, I mean, we're all over 30. Mm -hmm. Like, this is unfathomable when we were in college packing, you know, uh, apartments to watch fucking fights. Like, and that was the Mayweather heyday. That was some of the best fights of the last 20 years. And this I think is, feels like bigger somehow. By the way, this is just a start of it. Th this is, we haven't even touched what's going to happen here. And I've been saying this for four years. Um, and because, you know, someone who will, I started training MMA back in uh, like 2005, 2006 with yep. Jay Glazer. Well, he was the first one, him and Randy Couture yes. and Tyron, when Tyron was first coming on the scene, we were all in the gym, Clay Matthews. There was a couple guys in there, but I was like one of the first football guys to kind of make that transition where I did it every off season. Yeah. Now, what's going to happen here soon is we're going to see former athletes and former professional athletes, NFL guys, NBA guys, you start seeing it with Lamar Odom. You're, you're going to see it with rug, former rugby, former hockey guys. And I'm, we got, you know, three former NFL guys in my league alone that's made that, made that transition successful. So what, what I'm, what I'm trying to do now is, is saying, you know what, you guys, I retired. I was 28 years old. I played eight years. I got injured and I, and I just wasn't the same after I had a couple injuries. And so the fight game is still there. The problem is when I was, was coming out and I wanted to fight, the money wasn't there because these promoters and these companies didn't see the value in somebody having a name saying, you know, we're going to pay this guy, you know, half a million dollars plus Ooh. right now, if you have a name and you can, and you can scrap, you're going to get paid. So who can fight that you know of? I mean, we, we all know guys that nobody's heard of on our teams that we've seen scrap and we're like, yeah, that guy could, but he wouldn't sell. Like who's the guy that you've seen fight that would sell uh, from like one of our big four leagues? Um, Mercedes Lewis. Oh, I've yeah. trained with him. <laughs> yeah. He can go. Brian Cushing. Yep. Um, shit, man. It, this is probably about ten guys. Yeah. Uh, if you, if, I don't know if y'all seen a video, but Tim Duncan has been doing Muay Thai for the past like eight years. Oh man. Mm. You that's, know that's a scary. Sight. Get knocked out by Tim Duncan. <sighs> kick, I would surprise the fuck out of me. I'd be, mouth. <laughs> I'd be really confident, and then he'd kick me in the neck, and I'd be wow. like, "When did you learn that shit?" And a bunch of guys train MMA now, so. 
I mean, maybe we'll see somebody from the NFL next. Who do you think is the next fight? You said Masvidal. You said who? Who else was it? I would. Okay. I would go. Straight, I would go Masvidal, Masvidal or Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz. Yeah, that was it. That those 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 would be the only two that will. And and I and I see a lot of this right. There's a lot of fighters, like actual real fighters, been doing. Has been calling out Jake Paul. What a guy have to understand is there has to be some kind of a balance. You have to be a big enough name where people are going to pay. It's not just because there's a lot of great fighters that's not getting notoriety for whatever reason, right? Right. right. Mm-hmm. So you might be a great fighter, but why would Jake Paul fight you? He's looking for paydays. Right. Right. So the only payday he can get is now at this point is to fight Masvidal or fight Nate Diaz. Right. Lights out. Talk to people about what you've built. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've been, like I said, I've been around this sport, man. Um, it was kind of a way for me to let out my aggression and, uh, you know, switch up the off season and stuff. So I've been around up trained with some of the best, uh, in 2018, we launched lights out extreme fighting. Um, and we got hit by, by that pandemic where we got shut down for just like everybody else over a year, right. but we came out the gate and we launched a, a partnership. Now we're on football sports. So all of our fights, all of our, you know, content in the library, all, all, even all of our older fights are on football sports now. And now we, all of our fights are live. So we show uh, all in the country, nationally, Canada, Spain, and we're, we're kind of slowly rolling out other countries right now. Oh, that's awesome, man. The nickname, was that fighting related in when you got the nickname back before you did any of this, like Lights Out? Was that, where did that come from? I never asked this before. Yeah, I, I got it my sophomore year. I knocked out four kids in one game in high school. <laughs> And, Jesus. and, and after the, after the game, after the game, I had about 20 or 25 students come run up to me and say, man, you knocked these guys, you knocked them kids lights out. And I said, yeah, you know what? Call me lights out. And <laughs> you're like, that, that sounds good. It, it just, it stuck with me. I got to school on Monday and I'm walking into class and everybody's like, yeah, what's up lights. Well, they called me lights. I said, yeah. Oh shit, this came, this became a thing. Yeah. Now, you know, the thing is, it's like having a name like lights out. It's like fucking Rucker Park, right? You got, yeah. now you got to go out yeah, you and go. Act, you, you got, you know, like, come on, you can't be out there laying an egg and yep. your nickname lights out. You got to go punish some, some people, yep. you know? Yep. And so the name just stuck with me. I, I, and then college, when I got in University of Maryland, um, I remember EJ Henderson, uh, all these guys, Randy Starks, all the older guys got there. They said, man, we're not calling you lights out. You're a freshman. <laughs> And so I got in a game. We played Georgia Tech on ESPN um, night game, and I wasn't starting. And I was dropping in the flats, and a wide receiver Watkins come running, trailing across the field, and I'm oh, dropping yeah. in the flats. And I caught him, hit him, but like bow on the back, and I got up, and like I was flipping the light switch, and the crowd went crazy. Right, I had no idea that this, this was going to be a thing. I got to the sideline. My head coach Rob Fre- Rob Friesen said, "You do this shit again, you'll never play here." So I went from being high, excited. You know, up and happy. I just knocked this dude out of ESPN, all my boys and family and coaches and shit watching the, the game. And my, my co- head coach is level me. I'm like, God damn. You know? <laughs> the fridge, man. The fridge yeah. didn't realize how much that would help uh, recruiting at, at Maryland. He, he, right. he should have been playing chess, he, yeah. not checkers. But, he didn't see the vision. But, you know, I want to know personally how hard was the American Ninja Warrior? Yes, because my son, Waylon, <laughs> like, dude, my son, Waylon, is obsessed with American Ninja Warrior. He told his granddad <laughs> that that's what he's going to be when he grows up. And I forgot you did that. Yeah. And it was terrible. <laughs> like, it was like, no, the, the experience was fun, yeah. right? The experience was fun. So I, w- I think I was shooting, I was shooting, somewhere shooting something else and they were going around the country setting up courses like in um, Vegas and, you know, different parts of the country. The only course I had time in my schedule to do was a Denver course. So I said, you know what? Oh. Fuck it. I'll, I'll fly to Denver. I fly to Altitude. Denver yeah. and I got there and we're doing like these pre video things or whatever. Right. So yeah. mind you leading up to it, I was doing, um, what, what do they call it? The, um, the, the training with, I can't think what the name of CrossFit. CrossFit. <laughs> CrossFit. I, was doing, I was doing CrossFit, right. For about a month and a half. I dropped 15 pounds. You right? I'm, good. I'm You're too, feeling good. I'm feeling great. You couldn't oh. tell me shit. Right. <laughs> So I'm feeling great. And so I'm getting down, I drop 15 pounds, I'm lean. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna fly through this thing, right? And while I'm doing my interviews, I got off and I heard somebody else interviews next to me. And they said, yeah, man, we just finished up ninja school. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Who? Ninjas, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, like they dude. said, they ninja school for yeah. this shit. And, and like, I was at that point for the first time I was shook. I was so scared. I was like, man, I'm going to bomb this thing, right? Yeah. I do the course and I'm going through it. I flew through the first three or four or something. 
I got to the trampoline and I jumped the trampoline and, I, and because of my weight, I'm over 250. The trampoline floored and oh, didn't no. get me to the ropes. <laughs> I fell in the water. I fell in the water. You dude. fell in I the moat? I, yeah, I fell in it. I thought I was going to drown. Dude, my leg was caught in the rope. I said, man, I'm going to drown on national TV and everybody going to see me drown oh. right here. Right? And I said, that's it, man. No more of that shit. And then they would say, and it was oh. lights out for Sean Merriman. The whole thing was <laughs> a real. disaster, bro. Hey, Sean Merriman, uh, add him to the list of favorite Terps of all time, bro. Coming on the show. Appreciate that. And I hope you come back soon, dude. Hey, one thing. Chargers making the playoffs this year? Yes or no? 100%. And okay. they went in the, uh, the division. Ooh. I like that. I love Justin Herbert. Hey. All right, Sean. Appreciate you, man. All right, my man. Appreciate it. See you, All bro. Right, Sean. Thanks All for right. coming on, dude.